Okay, so now we're on the road to Iloka and this originally was a sandbar which is continuous all along the coast and what the tsunami did is it, it sort of penetrated through some sort of destroyed the sandbar at some locations and the tsunami sort of arrived up to here and apparently all this was sort of washed away and it sort of indicates the area where the sort of maximum runoff and we cannot enter actually because there are cows and well it would just be dangerous okay so today is the 4th of april this is our second day in chile and we've come to the town of iloca which is one of the most severely damaged uh, towns which was damaged by the by the tsunami here we're taking measurement of what is the base sea level and we can see that here there's some sand dunes they've been partially eroded by the tsunami although some vegetation still remains on top a lot of this debris is probably from the wash, uh, wash back of the tsunami water. Some rubbish has been piled up here by the local people, probably to incinerate after the town. After the, well, a lot of the buildings were damaged. Here you can see, well, in the distance you can see the, the, um, some of the buildings that survived. And then you can see, well, most people went into the mountains to take uh, refuge from the tsunami. Yeah, I'm still at Iloka. This is the highest point probably in the hand dune which was eroded, as you can see here. So um, okay. again we can see all the these dunes probably protected the village behind. It's this over there. But over here, although there are dunes, as you can see, which are protecting the village, the sea probably the snow probably came in through this opening over there. It's kind of like little harbour or something and then washed away all the houses in front and probably just came round the same thing over here here we are still taking measurements here we're in the middle of the village okay this house was uh, partly damaged by the tsunami the actually the this, the roof was taken off by the people and apparently the tsunami wave sort of um, over top the, the dune in several places, so as you can see here, but in the sort of highest places where you can, like over here you can't see, the, it wasn't generally over top, so here you can see like two, so two places. And generally the tsunami ca wave came from here, from the south, and from the north, over here. And here you can see another house generally it wasn't so damaged probably because it's like on piles built on piles because all the other houses were sort of completely destroyed and a lot of a lot has been rebuilt now so a lot of, probably all this was uh, a lot more sort of okay. so here what we're going to do is we're going to measure the maximum run up so here you see the, the, the seam this is your car and the tsunami came all the way up here went past the road went in front of the trees and as you can see, as it came back, it sort of piled up lots of rubbish in front of the trees. And what we're going to find is the, the maximum run-up area by seeing which was the, the maximum point where we can find debris in front of the trees, i.e. basically the highest watermark area. So here you can see some more debris in front of the tree. So here you can see that we're at the top sort of the area of maximum run-up and you can see how like the tsunami is piled, the water is piled, like lots of uh, leaves and everything over here. And you can see this nice straight line that runs all sort of through this area. So we're going to take this as our highest runoff point. And then from here we will measure the height of the sea.